نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي اللهم فكنا في الدين اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم ارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين ثم امين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سورة يوسف This surah was revealed in Mecca it has 12 stanzas and 111 verses 12th by the order of arrangement and 53rd by the order of revolution Regarding the time period, it was revealed in the second period of the stay in Mecca. And this was the time when the opposition and the hostility and the enmity by the people of Mecca was continuously increasing. The background of the revelation of the surah is that when the messages of Prophet ﷺ, they started to spread, then the people of Quraysh, they in the enmity they started adopting certain methods to defame the teachings of islam and the messages of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and one of their trick was that since they themselves they were illiterate and they had no divine scriptures for themselves so what they used to do is that they used to go to the people of the book that is the jews and the christians and they used to request them to give them questions from their own historical events mentioned in their books so that they when they will ask prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam these questions because they knew that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was also not literate he will not be able to answer these questions hence the falsehood of the prophethood Uh, will come out also so with this intention they had asked prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam three questions even before the revelation of surah uh, surah kahf and now they asked prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the question that hazrat ibrahim alaihi salam and his descendants they had settled in palestine but how did hazrat musa alaihi salam and bani israel how did they happen to reach egypt prophet sallallahu alaihi salam obviously did not know so he did not answer and he just kept quiet till the verses of surah yusuf were revealed in which answer to all their questions was given and it was narrated that how Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam's brother brothers they had planned and thrown him in the well to be taken out by the caravan to Egypt and they was he was sold as a slave and finally he managed to get to the position of a ruler of Egypt and then he called his parents and families from the famine stricken areas of Palestine to reside with him in Egypt and this is how bani israel migrated from palestine to egypt and finally uh, here musa alayhi salam was later chosen on so in the verses of surah yusuf the answer to their question was given but not only were the quraish provided with the answer to the question but at the same time a very effective and a very powerful message was also conveyed to them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained how the events in life of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam and uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam they resembled and how the evil behavior of the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam it resembled the behavior of Quraysh of Makkah who were basically the tribal brothers of Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam So this was done to warn them of the results of their evil doings with Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Allah clearly told them that how Allah helped Hazrat Yusuf alaihi salam and how the brothers were punished so they were warned that similar will be the end Allah will help and Allah will protect uh, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and will punish the Meccans if they do not refrain from opposing uh prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and making wicked plans against him now if we relate the events in the lives of 
both the profits are very, very similar. Highlighting the few similarities, we can see that Hazrat Yusuf Salam's brothers, they turned against Hazrat Yusuf and similarly the Quraysh of Mecca also became hostile to Prophet Both of them, they planned to kill and to get rid of the prophets. Third point, which is similar, is that both the prophets were finally forced out of their hometown, away from their family and from their friends. Both finally got blessed by respect and regard, love, position, power, authority, rule in the city they had immigrated to. Hazrat Yusuf also became the ruler of Egypt, and Prophet also became the head of state of uh, Medina. Similarly, both after getting the power and the authority and the rule, both of them, they implemented the religion, the orders of Allah on the land of Allah. Then similarly, both after victory, they both stayed humble, kind, merciful, and forgiving. For example, at the conquest of Mecca, Prophet ﷺ was repeated. He was repeating the words which, was, which were spoken to uh, the brothers by Hazrat Yusuf ﷺ. He was saying, La and he was forgiving. He was announcing forgiveness for all. Similarly, exactly similar to how Hazrat Yusuf ﷺ forgave all his brothers. The uh, brothers were also ashamed and they asked for forgiveness. And so did a majority of the non-believers of Mecca. They also seek forgiveness and they, most of them also embrace Islam. So there are many points which are very similar in the life history of both Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Hazrat Yusuf Salaam. Now, before um, I would start the uh, going through the verses, I would want to narrate the main life history in a chronological order. By traditions of Bible, Hazrat Yusuf was born in 1906 BC. He was the son of Hazrat Yaqub who was again the son of Hazrat Ishaq and was the grandson of Hazrat Ibrahim And um, his birth was in Hebron, Hebron, which is, was a city of Palestine. And the whole incidence of being thrown in the well took place in 1890 BC. And Hazrat Yusuf age at that time was almost like uh, about 17, 18 years old when he was thrown in the well. And the well in which he was thrown was in the northern area of uh, Sikkim, which was a place in Palestine close to Hebron. And the caravan which took him out was traveling from the city of Jilad, which was the city of France, Jordan, and it was traveling towards Egypt. And in Egypt, in those days, Egypt was ruled by the fifth, 15th family of the Hyksos kings, and they were disbelievers, and they were idol worshippers. Now, 17, 18 years of age, he was thrown in the well, taken out, and was sold as a slave. Then he was taken to the house of Aziz of Egypt. He stayed here for about two to three years. And then he was imprisoned for about eight to nine years. His rule lasted for about 30 years and he passed away at the age of 80 years. Now, before going through the message of Surah Yusuf, I will also want to sum up the basic lesson which we are going to learn from the events. And uh, I would request, I, I might not be able to repeat the messages every time on all the verses, but summarizing this in the start would basically mean that whenever you are going through the verses, you will have, uh, you will have these, uh, the basic message and the basic lessons learned from the surah as a summary. And you will keep on repeating these messages in your mind when we are going through the verses. The basic things we learn from the surah is that firstly, what happens is, is always what? Allah, Allah wishes. The plannings of the most 
powerful of rulers, the most bitter of the enemies, it generally it always fails and the plan of Allah is always completed. Allah is Al-Alim and Allah is Al-Hakim. He is all knowing and he is all wisdom. So whatever, wherever happens is with his will, his knowledge and his wisdom. Then we learn that most, most of the different trials, the critical, the critical hardships have some wisdom and they have some goodness in them. We might not understand or comprehend with our limited knowledge and comprehension, but there is always some hair in even the worst of trials. The goodness of the result may sometimes show up early and sometimes it may show up late, but there is always a wisdom and a blessing even in the worst and the most difficult of trials and hardships sent by the orders of Allah. So with the will of Allah, when, when his bondsmen are put into trial, they have to stay in a state of what? They have to stay in a state of gratitude, remembrance, patience, and obedience. Whenever tried with the will of Allah, all wise, all knowing, the bondsmen have to stay content, pleased, and peaceful in the decisions of the Lord, and very patiently wait for the blessings followed by the trial, which is encompassing their life. The events of Surah Yusuf clearly show us the manners and the sunnah of the prophets also, showing how polite and good their manners were, how soft-natured and humble they were, how merciful, kind they were, and highlights the sincerity of their goodness and their piety also. So these are the basic messages. We are keep on, we will be keep on uh, getting all these messages from all the verses and all the manners of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam and Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alif Lam Ra. Tilka ayatul kitab al mubin. Inna anzalahu. قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن قمت من قبله لمن الغافلين الله سبحانه وتعالى says ألف لام را these are the verses of the clear book. Indeed, we have sent it down as an Arabic Quran that you might understand. We relate to you the best of stories in what we have revealed to you of this Quran, although you were before it among the unaware. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling the story of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam narrated in Surah Yusuf as Ahsan al-Qasas, the best story of the Quran. Subhanallah. So today we shall be going through the best story of the best book of the world by the best author, the Lord of the universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand, comprehend, and remember the message and the teachings of Surah Yusuf and help us improve ourselves to be better human beings. One of these stories mentioned when Yusuf alayhi salam said to his father, Oh, my father, indeed, I have seen in a dream 11 stars and the sun and the moon, and I saw them prostrating to me. 
So here in this verse, Yusuf salam narrated his dream to his father, Yaqub alayhi salam. And in return, he advised the son. He told the interpretation of the dream and also gave him, gave him an advice. He said, oh, my son, do not relate your vision to your brothers or they will contrive against you a plan. Indeed, shaitan to man is a manifest enemy. So the father, Hazrat Yaqub, he advised Hazrat Yusuf not to relate the dream to his brothers. What we learn from here are quite a few things regarding the dreams. Dreams are a reality and they can be of three types. A dream can be a thought coming in the mind whatever we are thinking before sleeping or whatever is on the top of our minds before we sleep, it comes as it is in our dreams. The second type of dream may be a whisper of shaitan. And the third is, it may be a message or inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dreams of prophets were considered as revelations or inspirations of Allah. For example, we know that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dreamt that he was performing Umrah. So this was what? This was an order of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Hazrat Ibrahim Alayhi Salam saw that he had slain his son. So what was this? This was an order of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And uh, we learn that dreams may be true or they may be false. For example, before prophethood, <coughs> Before prophethood, Prophet Sallallahu had started having true dreams. That is, whatever he experienced in the dream actually happened in real life as well. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu has been reported in a tradition that if a person has true dreams, then this is a sufficient proof of his being truthful and honest. But by the way, we need to remember that if a person has false dream, this doesn't imply by any means that he is a liar or he is dishonest. Now, we also learn from the words of Hadith that a true dream is the 46th fraction of prophethood. And we learn from the words of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, similar to what Hazrat Yaqub had advised Hazrat Yusuf salam, La taqsus, that do not relate or narrate your dream in which you have been, you have, you've seen yourself receiving the respect and honor. Do not relate it or narrate it to your brothers. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that if someone has a pleasant or a dream in which he has been blessed, then he should not narrate it to anyone other than who is reliable and is not envious also. And uh, Prophet Sallallahu has clearly instructed us also regarding bad dreams, that if any person has a bad dream or a bad vision, like in a, in a dream, there is a mishap, there is a crisis. So if you have a bad vision, then do not narrate it to anyone, because if it is narrated, it exactly happens the same. So these are a few instructions of uh, Prophet Sallallahu regarding dreams. Verse number six, and thus will your Lord. So this was what Hazrat Yaqub how he interpreted the dream. And thus will your Lord choose you and teach you the interpretation of narratives and complete his favor upon you and upon the family of Hazrat Yaqub And he and he completed it upon your fathers before Ibrahim and Ishaq. Indeed, your Lord is knowing and wise. So Hazrat Yaqub told him the interpretation of the dream. This itself is a knowledge. Knowing and talking about the interpretation of dreams itself is a knowledge. Allah had blessed this knowledge to Hazrat Yaqub Hazrat Yusuf and even Prophet And with the knowledge of interpretation of dreams, no one should go about interpreting dreams until and unless the person has true knowledge about it. 
just by making assumptions or guessworks or hints or relating things to certain signs. No, we should not go about interpreting dreams until and unless we have the proper knowledge of interpreting dreams. And the message we learn from this verse are that the dialogue which took place between the father and the son. We learn quite a few successful parenting tricks of Hazrat Yaqub from this dialogue which took place between the son and the father. We learn that Hazrat Yaqub was close and well bonded to the son. The son has a dream and comes up to the father, walks up to the father, explains his dream. So shows what? That he was close and he was well bonded to the son. He was patiently listening to his queries and issues. Hazrat Yaqub had the time and used to take out the time, was giving his son his time and importance both. Then we can also see that it seems that there was a friendly bond between the both, the father and the son. We can see that the father knows what is going on in the mind and in the life of the son. Then the father is very frank and friendly and informal. And this form of a relationship and bond is existing between the two. And then the father tries to answer the questions and solve the issues of the son, guides him for what the best is. So this is a successful parenting tip by Hazrat Yaqub to all of us who are reading Surah Yusuf, that this is the type of a bond the parents need to develop between themselves and their children. And last but not the least, the father, when in, while his normal day-to-day -day conversation and interaction gives an introduction to the attributes of Allah. I repeat again, Hazrat Yaqub while his normal day-to-day -day conversations and while his normal interactions, daily interactions with the son, he is giving an introduction to the attributes of Allah. Like he's saying, your Lord is like what? Al-Aleem and Al-Hakim. He is all-knowing and he is all-wise. Remember, this introduction to the attributes of Allah by Hazrat Yaqub salam, that he is Al-Aleem and he is Al-Hakim. This came out as the main asset of Hazrat Yusuf salam's life. It became the main power behind him all the turning life, all the turning parts of his life. When he was in the well, when he was in the slave market, when he was imprisoned, throughout the different turnings of his life, he knew a voice deep down in his heart would tell him, don't get upset. Allah is Al-Aleem and Allah who is with you is Al-Hakim. So this is, this is an important sunnah of Hazrat Yaqub and a very, very successful tip for all the Muslim parents to introduce the children to the attributes of Allah. And moreover, the method of talking about Allah is also very effective. There is no formal sitting for teaching of religion. There is no formal sitting for teaching of attributes of Allah to the children, but indirectly, indirectly in an unfelt way during the routine, con routine conversation is an introduction to Allah made. This is very important style of talking and teaching about Allah and about the commandments of Allah. Because you know, when we as parents, we sit formally and we, we call our children, come let's talk about some, some attributes of Allah or some commandments of Allah, or let, let me tell you something about the Quran or about the Hadith. Come all of you, we, will, we are going to have a session of the teachings of Allah. So this generally, generally doesn't somehow work out, especially with the youth of today. Usually we get a response like the children coming up and say, oh, mommy, you start all over again. Oh, mommy, you just don't have anything else to talk. You just have one thing to talk about. So this 
passive, unfelt, indirect introduction during the normal daily conversations, just dropping a message passively is a very effective manner of introducing the attributes of Allah to the children. And once they will start recognizing their Lord, then it will obviously become very easy for them to love their Lord, to obey their Lord, and to submit to their Lord. Verse number seven, certainly were there in Yusuf salam and his brothers signs for those he asked. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicates here that the behavior of the brothers of Yusuf salam and their punishment is what? It is a message for all those who had asked who the people of Quraysh. Verse number eight, when they said, Yusuf salam and his brother are more beloved to our father than we. What is this? This is a comparison ending up in feeling of envy. They are more beloved to our father than we, while we are a clan. Indeed, our father is in a clear error. So from here onwards, I will be pointing out to the traits of the brothers of Hazrat Yusuf salam, and see slowly the change which will come out with the successful parenting of Hazrat Yaqub salam. So now from here, we will relate as to what were their manners and their behavior and their conduct to start with. The brothers of Yusuf salam, they had, they had become envious of Yusuf salam, because they thought that Hazrat Yaqub salam, he loved and he gave more attention to Hazrat Yusuf salam and his younger brother. They had turned envious. The second thing is they're saying Nahnu Usba, that we are a clan. So shows what? That they were arrogant and they were proud. And then their sentence and their words like Inna Abana Lafi Dalal, that our father is in a clear error or he is misguided. This, this labeling of their father as being misguided or being in an error and calling out names to, his, to their father is what? Showing that they were disobedient. They were disrespectful. They were disrespectful sons and they were, they were ill-mannered and they, were, they had a bad conduct and mannerism with their father. Verse 9, they said, kill Yusuf salam, or cast him out to another land. The countenance of your father will then be only for you, and you will be after that a righteous people. So they said, kill Yusuf salam. Remember, this is what envy leads to. This is the result of being envious. Envious mind is so, so very negative. It opens the gates to such major sins. And for whom? For whom? They are the sons. They are the grandsons. They are the great grandsons of prophets. Planning to murder their younger brother? This was made possible, this major sin by such a pious family? Such a major sin was such, such a pious family. This was made possible by envious, envious state of mind. Remember, in this material world of today, we frequently need to analyze ourselves regarding any form of envy in our hearts. And why did they plan to murder Hazrat Yusuf salam? So that when he is no longer around, then they will, be, they will be the center of attention of the father. How negative, how grossly negative. Rather than improving their own manners as sons and to gain attention, they thought of a negative tactics. This is envious state of mind. And another thing they said, that after 
murdering Hazrat Yusuf al Islam and after killing Hazrat Yusuf al Islam or casting him out to another land, then after that, you can turn and you can, you can repent and then you can become righteous people. This is generally, and this is in fact always a suggestion by Shaitan for encouraging people to commit sins. Because Shaitan encourages people to commit sins and uh, promising them that later on you can become righteous. For, for any, any person to commit sin and then afterwards seeking forgiveness to get exemption from the sins is to encourage them to commit major sins. And this is a, a very nasty trick of Shaitan, which it usually works on people. Verse number 10, said a speaker among them, like one of the brothers came up with a suggestion when they were planning to kill Yusuf, do not kill Yusuf, but throw him into the bottom of a well. Some travelers will pick him up if you would do something. This suggestion came up from one of the brothers while they were planning what to do with Hazrat Yusuf Now this suggestion was what? Remember, this is Allah. The brothers wanted to kill him and to get rid of him, but Allah just planned to get Hazrat Yusuf out of Palestine and out of his family. Now, what happened? What happened? Not what the envious and the clever and the wicked brothers they had planned or they had wanted. What happened was what Allah had wanted. So never, never do we need to be scared from the worst of the enemies. No person on Allah's earth can harm us until and unless Allah wants this. And this is Allah. And this is his planning. When he is sending a trial, he was also sending a means of cutting it down also. He never leaves his bondsmen. He never leaves his bondsmen unattended and unsupported and unprotected. Verse number 11, they said, O oh, our father, why do you not entrust us with Yusuf salam, while indeed we are to him sincere counselors? So after making a plan of uh, killing Hazrat Yusuf salam, they now came over to Hazrat Yaqub salam, their father, and just, just notice the style of speech. It is so aggressive and they are trying to stay one up. They are trying to have an upper hand as compared to their father, trying to blame their father that he is not entrusting him and he doesn't believe in him and he doesn't have trust in or faith in him. Verse number 12, send him with us tomorrow that he might eat well and play and indeed we will be his guardians. This is all a lie, a cooked up story, saying that, uh, telling their father that they will be guarding him, whereas the intentions were of killing him or throwing him in a well. This behavior of lying and a difference in speech and intention was what? They were hypocrites. So you can see, I'm continuously highlighting the behavior and the mannerism and the traits of the sons of Hazrat Yaqub salam, which we will see slowly were transformed and changed and how they improved with the successful parenting of Hazrat Yaqub salam. So they were what? They were clear cut hypocrites and they were liars. Verse number 13, Yaqub salam said, indeed, it saddens me that you should take him, and I fear that the wolf would eat him while you are of him unaware. Now, how did Hazrat Yaqub salam know that, uh, that the sons will come up with the story that a wolf will eat him? Did he have a knowledge of the future? No, nothing of the sort. It was just his wisdom, his experience of life, and his insight to the, to the traits of his son that he knew how they might plan or how wicked they might turn out to be. It was just his wisdom and experiences of life.
no knowledge of the future whatsoever. Verse number 14, they said, if a wolf should eat him while we are, we are a strong clan, indeed, we would then be losers, repeatedly being proud and arrogant of them, of them being a strong clan. Verse number 15, so when they took him out and agreed to put him into the bottom of the well, but we inspired to him, to whom, to Hazrat Yusuf salam, you will surely inform them someday about this affair of theirs, why they do not perceive your identity. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inspiring Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam in the well and consoling him. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not leave his patient bondsman in the worst of all the trials and hardships. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just narrating the important parts of the story and when we connect them all these different parts of the story then we can uh, relate a continuous events only the important parts of the story are being related what happened when Hazrat Yusuf salam, was thrown in the well how did he believe how did he behave and how did he what was his manner and what was his behavior had there been any person other than Hazrat Yaqu Yusuf salam, being actually thrown by his elder brothers to the bottom of the well, there in the darkness of the well, all by himself, with nothing to eat, with nothing and no, no one to help, no one to listen to his cry. And then with obviously very eminent that he is going to, he is going to die hungry and thirsty all by himself, anyone in his situation would have cried, would have howled, raising hue and cry, calling them bad names, cursing the brothers and complaining to Allah. But here, there is nothing of the sort. He seems calm, he is quiet, he is content, he is patient. How could he get all this? How was he in state of patience and how did he deep down in the well, how was he calm? Because there deep down in the well, there was, there was the voice of the father echoing in his memory. Yusuf, remember Allah is Al-Alim and he is Al-Hakim. Deep down in the well, he knew he knew, he realized that my parents, my family, my friends, no one knows where I am, which state I am in. But the Lord, but the Lord with whose will I can be taken out, who can save me, knows. He is all-knowing. He is all-seeing. He saw what my brothers did to me. He is seeing the state I am in. He is hearing what I am saying. He heard what they say, he heard what they said and what they planned, and he is hearing what I am saying. He is Al-Hakim. In his orders, there will always be a wisdom and there will be always some blessing or the other. So knowing all these attributes of Allah and recognizing his Rabb, it was easy for him to stay content with the will of Allah, with the decisions of Allah, with the trial from Allah. Just imagine, just imagine that if a person was thrown in a well and then he was told that maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Will he possibly, possibly understand or believe that this being thrown in the well will be a blessing in disguise. But it is we, we who know that in Yusuf salam's case, this was actually a blessing in disguise. Being thrown in the, in the well was a blessing. For it, it was going to do what? It was paving a way for him to be the king of Egypt. So remember, Remember that all forms of trials or hardships come by the order of Allah. 
by the order of Allah who is Al-Aleem and who is Al-Hakim. And they will always be a source of blessing later on, sometimes early, sometimes late. But they are full of wisdom and they are full of blessings. And these blessings will encompass our lives early or late, whenever he wills and whenever he decides. And they came to their father at night, weeping. They said, oh, our father, indeed, we went racing each other and left Yusuf salam, with our possessions and a wolf ate him up. But you would not believe us even if we were truthful. So now in this verse from 16 to 18, there is a conversation between Hazrat Yaqub salam, and the disobedient sons. And they brought upon his shirt false blood. Yaqub salam said, rather, your souls have enticed you to something. So patience is most fitting and Allah is the one sought for help against that which you described. So they returned to their father after throwing him in the well and they had cooked up and they had fabricated a false story and not only fabricated a false story, they had for a proof, they had brought a blood stained shirt of Hazrat Yusuf salam for the proof of the fabricated story they had created that, uh, that a wolf had eaten up Hazrat, Yaqub, Hazrat Yusuf salam. Now listening to the whole of the story and realizing the events of the happening, how did Hazrat, Yusuf, Hazrat Yaqub salam, respond? What did he say? Swabrun Jamilun. This is the trait of the patient, God-fearing believers. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَثَابَتُمْ مُصِيبَتٌ قَالُوا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ He stayed patient. He was patient, he was cool, he was composed. At such, at such a calamity, imagine what the calamity was. A father of ten sons, the ten sons who had murdered a father of 10 murderer sons, murdering his beloved sons. He is staying patient. Only, only the one who is aware of the attributes of Allah can do so. How did he behave with his sons? How was his, what was his response with his sons? Did he shout, scold, beat, beat them, curse them? No, nothing of the sort. He had very much, he did very much understand that they were telling lies. They had, they had fabricated a false, a false story. And moreover, he knew that they had done such an evil deed, but still handling with his, handling his disobedient, disrespectful, evil, wicked son was with total tolerance and patience, overlooking, ignoring their follies, forgiving them. So the, math, the main method of handling their sons was to do what? Just ignore, just stay cool, just stay composed and patience. You know, this is much against what we normally say as the famous proverb, it goes, spare the rod and spoil the child. Remember, action and reaction are equal but opposite. This is the third law of Newton, but it is a reality also that action and reaction are equal but opposite. Whatever goes in, is going to come out sooner or later. So whatever form of shouting, yelling, cursing, calling bad names, hitting, goes in the children by the parents is surely bound to come out sooner or later. 
So this is what we learn from the successful parenting tips of Hazrat Yaqub regarding his disrespectful and evil and wicked children. Verse number 19. And there came a company of travelers. Then they sent their water drawer and he let down his bucket. And he said, good news, here is a boy. And they concealed him, taking him as a merchant dies. And Allah was knowing of what they did. Now, what happened? From where did the company of travelers come? And why did they draw their waters? What is this all? This is Allah. This is Allah and his plans. The wicked, envious brothers had planned to kill as Allah says, Makaru wa makar Allah. They had planned, but Allah had planned also. Allah had planned to save. So what happened is what Allah had planned. Moreover, it is clear that Allah never leaves his bondsmen. Allah never leaves his bondsmen alone and unsupported. When Allah puts a person in trial, he creates situation, he creates conditions to take him out of it simultaneously also. Remember, trials are like thunderstorms. They're, they're not going to be permanent. Trials from Allah by the order of Allah are like thunderstorms by the order of Allah. They are temporary. They will pass off after some time. There were trials of being thrown by his brothers, by his own brothers. But at the same time, Allah had play, planned, <coughs> Allah had planned a manner of his being taken out of the well also. Allah had put, Allah had put an idea in the mind of the leader of the caravan to change his route. And then to send a person to draw a pail of water. This was the plan of Allah. And this is the reality of his trials and, and, his, and his mercy to help his bondsmen. And Allah in trial is all seeing and hearing and knowing when Allah sees that the person he pulled in trial, when Allah sees that the person he put in trial by his order and his planning, the person is patient then the rule of Allah, inna Allah ma'aswabirin, it operates. If only we would learn and remember all these lessons of the story, our lives would become very, very comfortable and peaceful in all the trials, in all the crises, in all the hardships we are going to face. Let us all revise. Allah is whom? Allah is Al-Alim and Al-Hakim. And why did the person say good news? Because there was a time in those days, uh, men and women and children, they were caught and they were sold as slaves. So this was what? This was like a merchandise for them. And that is why he said it's good news. <coughs> and then Allah says in this verse that the people who found, who took out Hazrat uh, Yusuf from the well, they concealed him. Why did they conceal him? Because they wanted to sell him as a slave. And they feared that some of his relatives might come and might spot him and they might take him away. So they concealed him so they could sell and get some money. Verse number 20. And they sold him. And they sold him for a reduced price, a few dirhams. And they were concerning him of those content with little. So the people who of the caravan who had taken out as a Yusuf from the well, they sold him in a slave market and they reduced the price to few dirhams just for 20 dirhams. Imagine just for 20 dirhams was Hazrat Yusuf sold. How worthless was he considered? being sold in a slave market, like animals were traded, a beloved son, the apple of the eye being sold for 20 dirhams. 
how how very worthless he must have felt how upset and how hurt he must have been but still he keeps quiet he stays patient this was another trial from allah remember life is a trial one trial ends and the other trial starts rabbana wala tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bi allah subhanahu wa taala don't try us with trials with which we cannot endure for which we cannot have patience so slavery was the next trial but remember even here allah did not leave his patient his patient yusuf alay salam all by himself what happened next verse number 21 and the one from egypt who brought him who bought him for 20 dirhams and the one from egypt who brought him said to his wife make his residence comfortable perhaps he will benefit us or we will adopt him as a son and thus we established yusuf alay salam in the land that we might teach him the interpretation of events and allah is predominant over his affairs but most of the people do not know now who brought who bought him it was the aziz of egypt aziz was in the name of the person but was the was opposed or was the title of the designation he was a senior official in the court of the king of egypt and what sort of a person was he he was kind and a caring person and above all he was childless allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created situation for hazrat yusuf alay salam to get to his house he could have been bought he could have been it was very very possible that he could have been bought by a harsh hard hearted a cruel master but instead allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arranged for the best of masters and the most suitable environment and the environment of a senior official of the king of egypt the best of environment where hazrat yusuf al islam could could also learn the worldly knowledge and the skills of leadership and the skills of administration he was exposed to this environment this is allah this is allah and his plannings and his love and his mercy and his wisdom and his help and support for all those patient bondsmen who are being tried he wanted to get yusuf alay salam to the kingship of egypt so smoothly smoothly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him out and kept on changing and kept on shifting and drifting him from one situation to the other to start with allah made him stay with his father and with his family there he could he could and in fact he got the best of spiritual and religious training there he was loved and he was cared and for him to learn how to love and care but this wasn't enough he needed to be exposed to the worldly knowledge and skills also so allah subhanahu wa taala very smoothly with his own plan chose him he wanted to choose him for his prophethood and he wanted him to be appointed as the king of egypt so he very swiftly and very smoothly moved him from out of his family from out of palestine he moved him out of one environment to the other environment from one hardship to the other hardship and the purpose of all was to brush him up to polish him up to refine him up and the one who was rightly chosen so he was exposed to different conditions different environments and different hardships and trials remember whom allah chooses for his task he puts him to trial to make him fit for his trial allahumma ja'alna minhum rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim 
verse number 22. And when Yusuf salam, reached maturity, we gave him judgment and knowledge, and thus we reward the doers of good. Verse 23, and she in whose house he was sought to seduce him. She closed the doors and said, come you. He said, I seek the refuge of Allah. Indeed, he is my master who has made good my residence. Indeed, wrongdoers will not succeed. So now there is a happening in the house of his master, in the absence of his master. The mistress, the wife of Aziz, sought to seduce Hazrat Yusuf salam. What was his answer? Ma'az Allah, I seek the refuge of Allah. This is and this should be the response of all the righteous, pious, and the God-fearing believers. As Prophet Sallallahu has been reported, it has been reported in a tradition in Bukhari that Prophet Sallallahu has said that on the day of judgment, there will be no shade except the shade of the throne of Allah. And the sun will be as close as close as a mile and the people will be submerged in their perspiration according to their deeds, some up to their ankles, some up to their knees, some up to their waist, and some would have a brittle of perspiration and they will be, they will be diving in it. So there will be no shade except the shade of throne of Allah. And then Prophet Sallallahu announced and promised that there will be seven whom will be in the shade of Allah on the day of resurrection. The first will be a just ruler. The second, a youth who grew up in the worship of Allah. And the third, Third, a person whose heart is attached to the mosque. And next, two men who love each other for the sake of Allah and they part for the sake of love of Allah. And the next is a person who, who is called by a woman of beauty and position for an illegal relationship. But he says, I fear Allah. This was the response of Hazrat Yusuf And the next is a man who gives charity in the path of Allah and hides it in such a way that his left hand does not know what his right hand gave in charity. And the seventh and the last is a man who remembered Allah in private and his, and his eyes shed tears out of fear of Allah. So this was Hazrat Yusuf salam's response. He resisted the seductive, the seductive invitation of the mistress. But resisting this seductive invitation of the mistress, was it easy? Imagine a slave, young, youthful, having all desires, and in this position, pleasing and getting on the right side of the mistress would seem a world to him. All forms of social, physical, psychological, emotional, economic advantages he would be able to drive out of it. Was it easy? It wasn't easy saying no, but for the God fearing believers of Allah, it was, it was trivial and easy, obviously. And then Hazrat Yusuf also explained the reason for his behavior. He added, Innahu Rabbi Ahsana Maswaya, that I'm behaving in this manner. Why? Because my master, my Lord, my Allah has given me a good residence. Hazrat Yusuf salam saying and announcing that Allah had given him a good residence. This is gratitude. What sort of a good residence was this? Yusuf salam away from his house, separated from his family, deprived from the care, the love, support of his companions, of his near and dear ones, all by himself, a stranger in a foreign country, and above all, being, being a slave. What sort of a good residence is this? 
but remember gratitude gratitude is not related to the blessings it is simply an outlook an outlook it is a frame of mind in the same situation two people in the same situation one may be thankless unhappy upset cribbing and grumbling but the other in the same situation and the same scenario may be grateful and will be content will be peaceful and happy because he has a positive frame of mind and he has a positive outlook to life i repeat again as they say two men behind the prison bars one looked at the darkness and other saw the stars so if we start thinking and looking positive the one if the person starts thinking looking and positive then one can always find plenty of blessings to be grateful for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in quran wa in tu'uddu ni'matullahi la tuhsuha that if you start counting the blessings of allah you will not be able to count them they are so they are so numerous and they are so innumerable and they are so countless so hazrat yusuf alayhi salam was grateful there were still so many things so many blessings even in this deprived situation if he was thrown in the well he was also taken out thanks to allah if was if he was sold as a slave he was bought and kept by a kind caring master thanks to allah allahumma ja'alni saburan wa ja'alni shukura rabbi aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik and she certainly determined to seduce him and he would have inclined to her had he not seen the proof of his lord and thus it was that we should avert him from evil and immorality indeed he was of our chosen servants so the chosen servants of allah need to do what say say no to all forms of immorality and the chosen people of allah need to do what need to stay modest and commit and adopt the moral standards of ethics allahumma ja'alna minhum verse number 25 and they both raised to the door and she tore his shirt from the back and they found her husband at the door she said what is the recompense of who intended evil for your wife but that he be imprisoned or a painful punishment now what is this all about allah's help and protection against the seduction offered by the mistress was again a trial this was a trial but did in this trial did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the merciful lord leave yusuf alayhi salam all by himself no when he was put to trial even before it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started to evolve a source of protection and help now the mistress had very carefully and cunningly and tactfully planned the whole event she had planned that while her husband had left and was not supposed to return for a safe period but by the will of allah the situation was created and the husband unexpectedly returned early and arrived at the site spot on and caught the things red handed this is allah he does not he he does not leave his bondsmen and he does what he wants only his will and planning works and the planning of all wicked and evil fail he doesn't leave his bondsmen suffering in trial sometimes early sometimes late but he does help his people so his help comes from whom who are patient who are obedient who rely on al alim and al hakim and stay content with his decisions moreover we also see that the that the woman she very craftily she the seducive mistress she quickly changed her stance few minutes back she was forcing him to accept her invitation and she was running after him but to see her husband she turned back and she she started blaming him of the bad intention 
telling lies. Remember, telling lies is what? Ummul Khabaris. A, pay, a person who is a liar for him, major sins, they become easy because the person knows that the back door of telling lies is open and the person will be able to tell a lie and get away with the biggest of the major sins. Verse 26, Yusuf salam said, it was she who sought to seduce me and a witness from her family testified if his shirt is torn from the front, then she has told the truth and he is of the liars. But if his shirt is torn from the back, then she has lied and he is of the truthful. So when her husband saw his shirt torn from the back, he said, indeed, it is of the woman's plan. Indeed, your plan is great. Yusuf, ignore this. And my wife, ask forgiveness for your sin. Indeed, you were of the sinful. So now what happened is that Hazrat Yusuf, salam, despite the fact that he was innocent and he was trapped into all this, all who managed to say was, he aravadatni and napsi, that she was the one who was trying to seduce me. But he could not say anything more than that. He could just say that. So there are situations in life where we cannot defend or protect ourselves and we just, just keep quiet and silent. But when he was quiet, then Allah, and he was patient, what happened then, this was another trial. This was another trial. Blame of immorality. Intention and attempt of adultery, especially for a pious and a modern, modest person like Yusuf alayhi salam, such a black mark on his righteous character. This was an immense trial. Remember, life is a continuous trial. One passes off, the next will start. But in all, Allah will be with with us if we stay patient. Now, how did the help of Allah come? Shahida shahidum min ahliha. There was a witness from the family members or the relatives of the woman herself. Immediately at the time where the episode and the dialogue was happening between the husband, the wife, and Hazrat Yusuf a relative came over as a witness to testify. And he also advised and he gave a very logical, circumstantial evidence to be seen. And he said, he told about the shirt where it was torn from behind or was torn from the front. <clears throat> so, the, so the relative suggested a circumstantial evidence and it was sought. And then when the evidence was sought, the husband saw and there was the proof that who was wrong and who was right. So this turned out as a clear proof against the mistress. But... What did the husband do? What did the husband do? And what did he say to the wife? And what did he say? What did he have to say to Hazrat Yusuf salam? He said to the wife, Inna qayda hunna azim, that evil and wicked are the plans of the women and the plans of the women are great. From this part of the verse, Inna qayda hunna azim, there are some people who quote, who quote this to comment, about women that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Quran that women are very crafty and women are very wicked and they are experts in making wicked plans. Remember, there is nothing of the sort. There is absolutely nothing of the sort. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no comment of Quran like that. This verse is in fact not a comment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the women. This is a sentence from the dialogue of Aziz. What has been? It is what? It is a sentence or it is a part from the dialogue of Aziz, which has been quote on quote mentioned by Allah during the narration. So it is not a comment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, despite recognizing whose fault it was, what did the husband do? What did he have to say? He said, Yusuf alayhi salam, ignore this. And he asked his wife to seek forgiveness for her sins. Indeed, you were of the sinful. How callous, how careless, least bothered 
about the modesty of his wife? How indifferent about such a plan of immorality in his own house? Or otherwise, I might say, how helpless, how very helpless regarding his wife. So either simply did not or could not scold or punish his wife, or on the contrary, just asked her to see forgiveness and told Yusuf Salam to just ignore and to overlook. Overlook and ignore? Really? Such a gross act? How, how careless and how, or how careless or how helpless. So in the next few verses, we will realize the result. We will, we will realize the result that when in a society, the women folk get so liberated and the men who supposedly have to act as, as al-nisa, they have become overpowered. They lose control. What such a liberated society ends up in, corruption, and immorality prevails. This is what we will be learning in the next few verses. Verse number 30. And the women in the society, in the city said, the wife of Aziz is seeking to seduce her slave boy. He has impassioned her with love. Indeed, we see her to be in clear error. So this was what is happening that uh, in the society and they were uh, talking about and they were commenting about the whole uh, event which was going out in the house of Aziz. So when she heard of their scheming, she went for them. She sent for them and prepared for them a banquet and gave each of them a knife and said to Yusuf alayhi salam, come out before them. And when they saw him, they greatly admired him. They said, Hasha lillah. And they cut their hands and said, perfect is Allah. This is not a man. This is none but a noble angel. So Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam's mistress to prove that she was right. And uh, she arranged a get together of all the ladies of the society. And it was what? It was just a luxurious gathering. When all the la ladies, they gathered up, she asked her, the youth of Palai Salaam, to enter. And uh, all the ladies, they were all struck by his beauty. And in a shocked state of mind, looking at him, they cut their fingers. And uh, instead, of their, uh, instead of their fruit, they were cutting. And so in this shock state, this is the only, this is the only part of Surah Yusuf salam, which indirectly highlights the beauty of Hazrat Yusuf salam. Otherwise, throughout Surah Yusuf, we are learning of uh, the goodness and of the kindness by Hazrat Yusuf salam. She said, that is the one about whom you blamed me, and I certainly sought to seduce him, but he firmly refused. And if he will not do what I order him, he will surely be imprisoned and will be of those debased. Verse number 33, he said, my Lord, prison is more to my liking that, uh, than that to which they invite me. And if you do not avert from me their plans, I might incline towards them and thus be of the ignorant. So what we learn from here is that all those who incline towards immorality, towards uh, adultery, towards illegal relationships are whom are ignorant in the sights of Allah. And uh, the verse also shows the preferences and the priorities of Hazrat Yusuf salam, who was the righteous and who was the pious. So his Lord responded to him and averted from him their plan. Indeed, he is the hearing and knowing. <coughs> Verse 35, then it appeared to them that after they had seen the signs that Aziz should surely imprison him for a time. So now this highlights the state of affairs which was prevalent in the society. The state of affairs was that the pious and the modest, they were in prison. 
and the immoral indulging in adultery, they were set free, liberated women, liberated women with no one to check, to control or supervise the women folk. The men of the society, they are being suppressed. Ladies are out of control, roaming about purposely vulgar gatherings, indulging in immoral conversation. This was what? This was as a result of the society was drowned because of all this, the society was drowned in immorality and all forms of modesty and piety had disappeared when the women had, had gone out of control. And when the men folk of the society had lost the control and they were being suppressed. Verse number 36, and they, and they entered the prison with him, two men. One of them said, indeed, I have seen myself in a dream pressing wine. The other said, indeed, I have seen myself carrying upon my head some bread from which the birds were eating. Inform us of its interpretation. Indeed, we see you, we see you to be one of those who do good. So the next few verses will narrate the part of the life of Hazrat Yusuf salam in the prison. Now in the prison, this is a conversation of Hazrat Yusuf salam with the two inmates of prison. They wanted to find out the interpretation of their dreams and they came over to Hazrat Yusuf salam. And what did they say? What they said was the reason why they had come to Yusuf salam. They said, Inna lanaraka minal muhsinin. Indeed, we see you to be of those who do good. We see here, we learn from here the good manners of Hazrat Yusuf salam. Even in the prison, even in the prison with the inmates of the prison being criminals of all sorts, all of them being non-believers, they being sinners, but dealing with them, dealing with them also, Hazrat Yusuf salam, is exhibiting his good manners. This is what Allah says in Quran, Kulu husana. And Prophet وسلم, used to supplicate, Allahumayni a'uzu bika mimmu kirat al-akhlaq wal-a'mal wal-akhwa'i wal-adwa. And for Prophet وسلم, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, inna qala ala khuluqin azim. And he himself, Prophet وسلم, himself said, I was sent for the completion of good manners. And not only good manners, Hazrat Yusuf salam, even answers the questions such criminals are coming up with. This is why, because Prophet salam, has said that those who have knowledge about something, but despite the knowledge, they do not answer when they are asked about that thing, will be given two tongues of fire in their mouth on the day of resurrection. So Hazrat Yusuf salam, was kind to them, was doing good to them, was polite to them, was answering their questions. Words number 37, he said, you will not receive food that is provided to you except that I will inform you of its interpretation before it comes to you. That is from what my Lord has taught me. Indeed, I have left the religion of a people who do not believe in Allah and they in the hereafter are disbelievers. So Hazrat Yusuf salam, is now talking to the two inmates of uh, the prison who have come to ask the interpretation of their dream. And he, he said, that he promised that he will answer their queries before the meal was served. This he did purposely. He promised them that he will answer their queries before the meal was served. And he did this purposely because now he was going to give them a small message and he was going to give them a brief invitation towards Islam. And he thought that when he would start talking of something other than he was asked, 
then they will lose interest and they might leave. So tactfully, to keep them hooked on, he promised them that he will answer their interpretation. So also, before telling them the interpretation, he started introducing them to the attributes of Allah. He said what? That uh, this, that is from what my Lord has taught me. That Yusuf salam told them that this knowledge, this knowledge of the interpretation of the dreams, which had impressed the, in, uh, the inmates of the prison, was not out of his own account. He said, Mimma alimni is what my Lord has taught me. This shows what? This shows that Hazrat Yusuf Islam, because of his knowledge, had not turned arrogant. He had stayed humble and he was grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, acknowledging the blessing he had blessed him too. And remember, humbleness and gratitude, they go side by side, one potentiating the other. All those who are grateful, they are humbled to Allah. And all those who are humbled to Allah, they develop the feeling of gratitude also. So Yusuf alayhi salam very humbly introduced his Lord. Rather than trying to uh, boost about himself, he was humbly introducing his Lord and also told him. And he also, he, he left them that, he told them that this was a blessing of Allah. So this tells us all that all those who have been blessed by the blessings of Allah need to do what? Need to introduce to the people humbly the Rabb, the sustainer who had blessed all the blessings with. And how precise and how wise he is, how wisely did he handle all of them? He was going to introduce his Lord and also told him that he had left the religion of all those who believed other than Allah. But he was so wise and he was so precise that he directly did not criticize their religion. He directly did not criticize their belief, but very wisely introduced what the truth was. Verse 38, he said, that I have followed the religion of my fathers, Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub. So there, after introducing Allah, and after indirectly introducing his religion, he is introducing all the prophets also, and his ancestors also. And it was not for us to associate anything with Allah, that is, from the favor of Allah upon us and upon the people, but most of the people are not grateful. Then Hazrat Yusuf Islam is continuing, that is, that this is what, this is a blessing of Allah, and he's introducing his uh, ancestors and the prophets of Allah. Oh, my two companions of prison are separate lords better, or Allah, the one, the prevailing. Now, after a very wise introdu introduction to Allah, to the prophets, and to his religion, indirectly, passively, he directly led them uh, a leading question. He asked them a leading question. Rather than directly, directly criticizing, rather than directly criticizing them or trying to corner them, he did not try to directly corner them or he did not directly criticize them because this would lead to what? This would lead to them being offended. He did ask who do you worship and moreover he wasn't even judgmental to comment that oh you you are the non-believers you are you are committing major sins you are indulging in polytheism or you are the people of hellfire no just an in indirect questions what do you think so this question will force them to put their minds to it and will also prevent them being, being irritated or being hostile to all what he was saying. Verse number 40, 
you worship not besides him except mere names you have named them you and your fathers for which allah has sent down no authority legislation is not but for allah he has commanded that you worship not except him this is the correct religion but most of the people do not know so now generally what happens is how is Hazrat Yusuf? Why is Hazrat Yusuf salam, talking to them like this indirectly and passively? Because you know, generally, when non-believers, all of the people who are involved in polytheism, when they are invited towards faith and believe in oneness of Allah, then generally the first argument what they come up with is that our ancestors. Our ancestors had the same fate. And they generally say that it is our ancestral religion. So in other words, all those who believe in partners other than Allah, when they are invited towards the belief of oneness of Allah, in other words, they try to tell the person who is inviting towards Islam that are you trying to tell us? that our ancestors, they had wronged and they had sinned. So indirectly, they try to tell the person who's inviting that, look, by all this invitation, you are labeling that our ancestors were sinners or they were the wrongdoers. But relating to this psyche, before they could answer back very, very wisely, Yusuf salam told him, told them to satisfy the debate in their minds about their ancestral religions. And Yusuf salam, also with wisdom told them that their ancestors were, were, were doing what? They did not have a solid proof of their concepts and beliefs in being right. And then another thing which usually comes up in the mind of the invited people is that have I been ignorant very sensibly and tactfully rather than telling them that you are ignorant and you are illiterate and you are behaving silly. He said what? Majority does not know. So this is being tactful, not offending them, no personal comments, no personal judgmental uh, criticism, which might raise hostility. So that we need to what? Closing the doors of their minds and sealing the hearts with obstinacy. So remember, unplanned, improper, unwise, untactful invitation towards Islam sometimes is very, very harmful and acts as a deterrent to offend the non-believers against Islam also. So the points to be noted are that we can see invitation towards Islam seems as an integral and an essential and persistent part of the life of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam till now in a state of, in a continuously miserable state, one trial after the other, hardships, crises, consecutively non-ending situations cropping up one after the another. Despite being in the prison, such a man, pious man, being surrounded by all forms of criminals. How difficult. But even in all these situations and scenarios, he still continues inviting towards Allah, connecting the people with their Lord. Remember, remember, Dawa invitation towards Allah, as Allah orders in Quran, so always, always has to be the first priority. Inviting towards Allah, connecting the people of Allah with Allah, with their Lord, as always has to be the first priority everywhere. May it be homeland, may it be a foreign land. It, may, it has to be the primary priority for everywhere, for everyone. 
everyone, known, unknown, relatives, strangers, friends, enemies, rich, poor, master, servant, old, young, women, men, blacks, whites, literate, illiterate, pious, disobedient, Muslims, non-Muslims, inviting everyone under all conditions, under all conditions, all situations, we may be rich, we may be poor, healthy, sick, we may be strong, we may be weak, we may be happy or sad, blessed or deprived, we may be old or young, all times, all seasons, day, night, summer, winter, monsoon. This is what Yusuf salam did. This is what Nuh salam and all prophets did. And this is the manner we need to adopt. And moreover, inviting towards Allah, Dawa, wisely, with planning, carefully and tactfully, sensibly, not offending, not abusing, being polite, gentle, and staying sincere and non critical and non judgmental. This is how we need to do our Dawa and staying humble and polite. If you see the talk, the talk for the day by Hazrat Yusuf was like what? It was very brief. It was brief, it was simple and legible to the point and yet very effective and very comprehensive. So I would suggest that for all of us, we need to stay prepared in our minds with like two to five of such short comprehensive talks relating to Dawa, relating to inviting people towards Allah. So that whenever and wherever we get an opportunity, we can, we can immediately drop a few words. Because, you know, I feel that usually when we get a chance to say something, we are short of words. And we feel then that we won't be able to say much. So we just choose to stay quiet and we lose our chance. So you keep your homework done and you stay prepared guiding someone might be an atonement for our hereafter also. Verse 41, oh, two companions of prison, as for one of you, he will give drink to his master of wine, but as for the other, he will be crucified and the words will eat from his head. The matter has been decreed about which you both inquire. So in this verse 41, finally, after his brief inviting note, he told them the interpretation of their dreams as he had promised. Because keeping promises is what? It is a manner of the pious and it is also the order of Allah. And uh, avoiding from concealing one's knowledge and not sharing it with others, it is a worst form of stinginess and laziness or it is the dishonesty also. And uh, what did he have to tell them? Fasaka Rabbahu means what? That this person was to be a waiter for the king who would serve wine to the king. And the second, uh, second person was a um, convicted criminal and he <clears throat> was to be crucified. And he said, whom? Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. He said to the one whom he knew would go free, mention me before your master. But shaitan made him forget the mention to his master. And Yusuf alayhi salam remained in the prison for several years. Here um, he asked the one who would be free to mention so that he could be set free also. And in the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the word bizarasinin. In Arabic, the bizarasinin means a period of about like five to eight years. Just like we, uh, we say decade for 10 years and we say century for 100 years. So similarly, bizarasinin, how many years? Like about five to eight years. And this was his stay in the prison. Verse 43, and subsequently, the king said, indeed, I have seen in a dream seven fat cows being eaten by seven uh, that were lean and seven green spikes of grain and the other that were dry. Oh, eminent ones, explain to me my vision if you should interpret. 
So uh, the king was narrating his dream to find out the interpretation. But what happened was they said, it is but a mixture of false dreams and we are not learned in the interpretation of dreams. So any person who is not learned enough in the knowledge of the interpretation of dreams should not by his assumption or by linking up or hooking up, uh, try to explain the interpretation of the dreams. This is falsehood. But the one who was freed and remembered after a time said, I will inform you of its interpretation, so sent me forth. And uh, now the person who had been set free and was the waiter of wine for the king, he remembered about his Yusuf Verse 46, he said, Yusuf, O man of truth. He said what? Remember, honesty was an essential trait of all the prophets. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explaining the traits of prophets is repeatedly mentioned. Qana Siddiqan Nabiya. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself was called what? As-Sadiq Al-Amin, the truthful and the trustworthy. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala himself says about his own attribute, وَمَنْ أَسْتَقَ اللَّهُ hadisa, Who is more truthful than Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Now, when the inmate of hell, uh, inmate of uh, the prison, he returned to Yusuf Alayhi Salam, what did he say? He called him the truthful and he said, explain to us about seven fat cows eaten by seven that were lean and seven green spikes of grain and other that were dry that we may return to the people. Perhaps they will know about you. So here he again comes up to Yusuf salam, asking about another dream, like after five to eight years, forgetting all what had Yusuf salam had asked him to mention about Yusuf salam to the king. Had there been anyone else? Had there been anyone else other than Yusuf alayhi salam would have definitely gotten out. He would have definitely gotten out. Calling things like, oh, you, you get lost. I was kind to you. I asked you to repay me by mentioning me to the king. And you great, ungrateful, you forgetful, you just get lost, you run away. I wouldn't tell you a word. No. But this was not the case with, with the Muhsin, with the Muhsin, Yusuf alayhi salam. In Surah Al-Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the traits of those who will be the inmates of Jannah. Where Allah says, they are those who do what? Al-Qadimeen al -ghais. They just control their anger. Afina and Anas, they forgive the people. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen, and they are the muhsineen, they are the doers of good. Muhsineen are who? Who are just who are just doers of good. They do good to all the bondsmen of Allah, who do more than their duty, who do more than the rights of the next person. So what did Hadith Yusuf Salam do? He was a muhsin. He controlled his temper. He forgot, he forgave him, and he was kind to him even than more he deserved. You know, it would, it would have been enough. It would have been enough if, if he had just controlled his, his temper and just forgiven him and asked him to go back. But he did more than his duty. He gave him the right answer also. So the lives of, and the manners of the prophets are what they are actually a, a translation and a human model of the verses of Quran. Yusuf alayhi salam said, Yusuf alayhi salam said, you will plant for seven years consecutively and what you harvest, leave it in its spikes, except a little from what you will eat. And then will come after that seven difficult years, which will consume what you saved for them, except a little from which you will store. And then will come after that a year in which people will be given rain and in which they will press olives and grapes. So what happened here was that Yusuf alayhi salam in detail 
explained not only the interpretation of the dream, but also told them the solution to the crisis the dream was pointing to. The interpretation of the dream was what? The dream indicated, and that is what Hazrat Yusuf salam explained to them, that the dream is indicating that there would be, initially, there would be seven years of cultivation. And these seven years of cultivation would be followed by seven years of drought, and this would result in severe famine. Now, he told them, he told uh, the people to save themselves from the effects of Hazrat Yusuf salam explained and advised them how they could save themselves being hit by the famine. Yusuf al-Islam very wisely suggested that in the seven years of cultivation, while they were getting the yields and the crops and the cultivation, they should be consumed with a great planning and calculation. And all the excess should be kept in for the tough years of famine ahead. He also suggested that the grains should not be taken out of the stocks because that is what? A natural protection against all forms of insects attacking the grains. And then he suggested that they should be kept in the stocks and then they should be stored in the granaries for future consumption. What do we learn from all this? The goodness, the kindness of Hazrat Yusuf salam. And has the Yusuf Salam's goodness and kindness to whom? Idol worshippers? A society who had been so unfair and hard to him? He had spent eight years of his youth in the prison because of their wrong decision and their injustice. Even when they inquired about an issue for which he knew a wise solution, he openly, he openly came out with the solution and shared his knowledge. He was just asked about the interpretation of the dream and that was it. But since he knew even more because of his wisdom blessed, blessed to him by Allah, he open-heartedly shared it and guided them for what was better. Why did he do this? To save the humanity from the calamity of famine. This is a care and service of humanity by all the blessings he was blessed with. This is providing services even for non-Muslims, for the general welfare out of sheer goodness to tell more than he was asked. Verse number 50, and the king said, bring him to me. But when the messenger came to him, Yusuf salam said, Return to your master and ask him, what is the case of the women who cut their hands? Indeed, my Lord is knowing of their plan. Now what next? When the person went back to the court and narrated to the king all what Yusuf salam had told about the, about the interpretation and about the solution to the famine, the king was thoroughly impressed. He was, he was impressed by the wisdom. And so he called out, for uh, Hazrat Yusuf al-Islam to be brought to him from the prison. Had it been anyone else being imprisoned for the last eight years in the prison and now being called by the king would have, would have run out without the second thought. What could be better? What could be better? This was like the best offer under the situation. What else could one be what else chance could one get like being invited by the king himself out of the prison? But for the prophets, remember, the worldly gains, the worldly riches, power, authority was just like of no importance and no priority at all. His first priority here was to purify his character from the immoral blame, from the blame of immorality. Because, you know, if the prophets and even all those who are engaged in dawa or invitation towards Allah, if they have dishonesty or immorality of character proven against them, then their dawa and their invitation towards Allah, it will lose its effectiveness. 
So to rectify his blame, he asked that an inquiry should be carried out from all the women who had put the blame on him. So what did the king do? Said the king to the women, what was your condition when you sought to seduce Yusuf Salam? They said, all single, they all said, perfect is Allah. We know about him, no evil. The wife of Aziz said, now the truth has become evident. I, it was I who sought to seduce him. And indeed he is of the truthful. That is so, Aziz will know that I did not betray him in his absence and that Allah does not guide the plan of betrayers. So the wife of Aziz came out with the truth and the, the blame, which was uh, uh, the blame of immorality and as an adulterer, which was put on Hazrat Yusuf salam, was now cleared off. And moreover, it was also proved that he was sincere to his master and he was honest and he was trustworthy. And I do not equip myself. Indeed, the soul is persistent enjoiner of evil, except those upon which my Lord has mercy. Indeed, my Lord is forgiving and merciful. So here he is continuously uh, relating and introducing the people to the attributes of Allah, just like his father. Verse number 54, and the king said, bring him to me. I will appoint him exclusively for myself. And when he, uh, when he spoke to himself, he said, indeed, you are today established in position and trusted. So the king initially sensed relating all what Yusuf salam had told and the way he had behaved and what witnesses had come, the king sensed the intelligence, the wisdom and intellect of Yusuf salam. And after the dialogue, he, he realized about his honesty and his sincerity to his master and his modesty was also proven. So the king thought high of Yusuf salam, and uh, he considered appointing him in one of his personal posts to avail of Yusuf salam's services. Verse 55, Yusuf salam said, appoint me over the storehouses of the land. Indeed, I will be a knowing guardian. So now what happened that when the king mentioned how reliable he think he thought that as a Yusuf salam was that is the king mentioned his reliability of as Yusuf salam and was posting him then as Yusuf salam took advantage of the situation and he openly asked for power and post and authority for himself by this Yusuf salam's purpose was not to acquire the worldly gains or riches, but his purpose was purely and purely to gain power and authority for the implementation of Islam, to gain power and authority for the implementation of law and rule of the Lord and the land of the Lord. So what we learn is that it is not only permissible it is not only permissible, but it's also advisable to ask for or to work for or to make struggle for acquiring power and authority, provided it is done with intention of implementation of Islam. And in fact, all this trying to work for or trying to make effort to acquire power and authority and rule, in fact, is a sunnah of Hazrat Yusuf salam. And in fact, it is also a sunnah of Prophet wasalam, himself. When he immigrated to Medina, he also, after becoming the head of state of Medina, he accepted the, he accepted the post and the position of the head of state of Medina. And he did so why? Because he wanted to make Medina as an Islamic state where the, where the system of government was according to the orders of Allah, when, when the system of judiciary was according to the laws of Allah, and where the system of life and when the system of society was according to the teachings and ethics of Quran and Hadith. 
Moreover, from these two verses, the verse number 54 and verse number 55, we also learn the traits which are needed for the righteous and pious Muslim rulers and Muslim leaders we are going to choose for ourselves. The good Muslim leaders and the perfect Muslim rulers need to have what? They need to be makinun, aminun, harfizun, alimun. They need to be trustworthy. They need to be knowledgeable and wise, and they need to be protective and guarding of the teachings of Quran and Hadith and of the secrets and of the mineral resources and of the wealth and riches of the Islamic State. And thus we established Yusuf salam in the land to settle therein wherever he willed. We touch with our mercy whom we will, and we do not allow to be lost the reward of those who do good. And the reward of hereafter is better for those who believed and were fearing of Allah. Verse number 58, and the brothers of Yusuf salam came seeking food and they entered upon him. The brothers of Yusuf salam coming to Egypt now from here, the next important part of the story starts. And the part of the story explains what happened between Yusuf and his brothers. Now, why did the brothers of Yusuf come? And where had they come? The brothers had come from Palestine to Egypt because you know what happened? as had been prophesied and as had been informed as the interpretation of the dream by Hazrat Yusuf salam, severe drought, severe drought. And it ended up in a very extensive and widespread famine. Almost all the countries and all the land was struck by this calamity. But the people of Egypt, was saved from the famine, from the disastrous results of the calamity of the famine. Why and how? This was the wise planning and the organized, timely management of Yusuf salam as a Muslim ruler. Beforehand, he had planned all this. And this is what had saved the people of Egypt from the famine despite the extensive drought. Like all the other places, they were struck by famine, but the people of Egypt were saved. This proves what? The productive Muslim rulers and the implementation of Islam can be for countries, for societies. How helpful, how, how productive, how productive, how fruitful, how useful Muslim rulers and how useful and how productive the implementation of Islam can be for societies and for countries. Allah's help realize the importance of implementation of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all, help us all realize the importance of the implementation of Islam and help us strive and struggle and work for the empowerment of Islam. So the brothers had traveled all the way from Palestine to Egypt to get food rations from Egypt. In Egypt, there were grains sufficient for the use of their own people as well. They were surplus for the people coming from all the other areas who, who were struck with famine. This is the blessing of implementation of Islam as a code of life in a society and as a mode of government in a state. And then what happens is that they entered upon him and he, who has a Yusuf salam, recognized them, who the brothers, but he was taken, was to them unknown. Now, why did the brothers not recognize Hazrat Yusuf salam? Firstly, because when they had dumped them in the bottom of the well, he was, uh, he was like just 17 years old. And now, like 30 years being passed, there were gross changes in his appearance. Obviously, he must have, uh, he, this, all these changes, these changes in his bodily appearance must have made it 
impossible for him to be recognized. And secondly, they had dumped him in the well and they could not, they could not in their wildest of dreams imagine that he will end up being the king of Egypt. But he had recognized all of them because they were like 10 of them, a clan of 10. And like they were older than him and he, they had not, not like most probably changed a lot. So he recognized them and they did not recognize him. And what happened when he recognized them and when he had furnished them with their supplies, he said, bring me a brother of yours from your father and do not you see, do not you see that I give full measures and that I am the best of accommodators. But if you do not bring him to me, no measures will there be hereafter for you from me, nor will you approach me. They said, we will attempt to dissuade his father from keeping him. Indeed, we will do it. And then in uh, the next verse also, he continued trying to tempt them. So when after from the verse number 59 and the following verses, what we need, what we learn is that when after receiving the ration, the, the sons, uh, the, the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, uh, he gave them the rations. And uh, after giving them the ra rations, when they were about to leave, there was a dialogue which took place between Yusuf alayhi salam and the brothers. Obviously, they're not recognizing him and he recognizing them. He told them to bring with them. The next time when they came to get the rations, he asked them to bring uh, their youngest brother with them when they came the next time. Hazrat Yaqub salam had 12 sons, 10 uh, sons from one wife and the two younger sons, Hazrat Yusuf salam and his real brother, Hazrat Bini Amin from the other wife. So Yusuf salam was referring to Hazrat Bini Amin. He tried out like all tactics to ensure that they would bring him in his next visit. He mentioned how he was a very good accommodator and how he had accommodated to him to them and how he had given them extra weights out of kindness and goodness. He just was trying to tempt them. And not only that, he also tried to give them a threat that if he did not bring them, if they did not bring his brother, then they will not get any more rations so he tried to tempt them to convince them and he tried to threat them to convince them he was just trying to ensure that Bini Amin comes with them the next time verse number 62 and Yusuf salam said to his servants put their merchandise into their saddle bags so they might recognize it when they have gone back to their people and perhaps they will again return so returning their ma uh, merchandise was to create an impact of his generosity and of his kindness to ensure that they do come back next time and they do bring their younger brother also. Verse number 63. So when they returned to their father, they said, Oh, father, further myers have been denied to us. So send with us our brother that we will be given myers, And indeed, we will be his guardian. So when they got back home, they tried to convince and motivate their father to send Bini Amin with them in the next visit and uh, making, uh, making pledges and promises of keeping him protected and taking care of him also. Verse number 64, he who, Hazrat Yaqub salam, he said, should I entrust you with him except as I entrusted you with his brother before? But Allah is the best guardian and he is the most merciful of the merciful. So Hazrat Yaqub salam seemed to, he like seemed to have his doubts because of his previous bitter experiences with, experience with them the bitter experience of letting them take Yusuf alayhi salam and um, taking them for their words. So they also seemed to have lost their reliability in, their in the eyes of their fathers also. Because, you know, this is exactly what happens to people who are liars. 
because uh, when they had lied once, they had lost their reliability to Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam. But uh, this time, to actually, when they were wanting to guard Bini Amin, they had to make oath and they had to make promises to make him believe. But uh, while Yaqub alayhi salam mentioned his reservations on their demand, they gained uh, they gained uh, acceptance to his uh, routine manners. According to his routine manners, he was giving introduction to the traits of Allah. And uh, while his uh, conversation, and he told him, uh, he told them that he being the father was trying to be protective for his son. But the actual power of protection is with Allah who is merciful. So he continues with his manner of introducing the attributes of Allah in his routine conversation. Verse 65, and when they opened their baggage, they found their merchandise, which merchandise, which had been returned to them. They said, oh, father, what more could we desire? This is our merchandise returned to us, and we will obtain supplies for our family and protect our brother and obtain an increase of a camel's load. That is, when another brother will be there, we will, the ration was given for head for individuals. So if if another person goes, we will obtain an increase of camel's load. That is an easy measurement. So this was exactly why Yusuf salam, had asked his servants to return his their merchandise so that they will be impressed by their generosity and they would convinced to visit again and bring the brother to him. Verse 66, Yaqub salam, said, Never will I send him with you until you give me a promise by Allah that you will bring him back to me unless you should be surrounded by enemies. And when they had given their promises, he said, Allah, over what we say is a witness. Finally, Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam, he agreed to send the youngest son under the condition that they will promise to protect him. And at the same time, he was continuously introducing Allah and the attributes of Allah. Verse number 69. And then he, Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam, he said, Oh, my sons, do not enter from one gate, but enter from different gates. And I cannot avail you against the decree of Allah at all. The decision is only for Allah. Upon him have I relied and upon him let those who rely indeed rely. Now, why did Hazrat Yaqub salam suggest this, that my sons do not enter from one gate, by, but enter from different gates? This suggestion was given by Hazrat Yaqub salam to the 10 sons for basically two reasons, which I understand, because he thought that the 11 sons, obviously the 10 previous and now Bini Amin being added with them, the 11 sons, all tall and well-built and good-looking and strong and youthful, all of them entering through one single gate abreast, they will catch the eyes of people. And this may lead to them being affected by some envious, some jealous, or some evil eye. Moreover, since there was famine and there was poverty, so in such um, socioeconomic calamity, um, 11 young men, they entering from the same gates, uh, they might be suspected as those who will loot and plunder, or they might be taken as dacoits, and they might be taken as prisoners. So he did not voice out his fears, but, but very, very wisely gave the suggestion to his sons. And this was just a fatherly suggestion, trying to protect them from any harm or any crisis or any loss. But at the same time, while he was suggesting, uh, giving a fatherly advice, trying to save him, at the same time, he again talked about Allah. So what is it? Frequently talking about Allah, frequently remembering Allah, frequently mentioning Allah, and indirectly introducing the traits of Allah. These are all, these are all the successful parenting trips by 
Yaqub alayhi salam. And what he told them was that what happens is not what the ones men plan or desire, but is totally what the Lord plans and desires. And that we, we can only plan and we can only try and make an effort and that we should. We should try and we should try and make a plan and effort to save ourselves from loss and difficulties. But despite our efforts to protect and save us, in, it is what? It is the order of Allah which protects us. So despite making efforts and despite struggling to save ourselves, we need to rely on Allah who is the real controller of all. Verse number 68. And when they entered from where their father had ordered them. So this is exactly what happening is now that they are now turning a bit obedient to their father, uh, acting upon the orders of their father. Say so entered from where their father had ordered them. It did not avail them against Allah at all, except it was a need within the soul of Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam, which he satisfied. And indeed, he was a possessor of knowledge because of what we had taught him, but most of the people do not know. So this is exactly how it happened, despite the fact that Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam had thought of it well in time, had planned, had suggested how to stay safe. Despite the fact that he was wise, despite the fact that he was a prophet, still the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam finally did end up being suspected and taken up as thieves and they were taken up as prisoners. So what happens is what Allah wills, but we, even despite we rely on Allah, we need to work, we need to plan, we need to try, we need to make effort to save ourselves from hardships and difficulties. But after making all the efforts and plans and struggles, we need to rely and stay content with the orders of Allah. Verse number 69, and when they entered upon Yusuf alayhi salam, he took his brother to himself and he said, indeed, I am your brother. So do not despair over what they used to do to me. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. When they got to you, uh, they were together. Finally, finally, when the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam got the younger brother to Yusuf alayhi salam and the two real brothers, they were united and they met after a long period. What happened? What happened? What did they talk? What did they say? How did they behave? What was their manner? I will stop here. I will stop here to comment. You know, while reading the stories of the prophets and the stories of the patient companions of the prophets also, one starts imagining that they were superhumans. And we start thinking that they were like, most probably they were robots who were lacking emotions and who were lacking emotions which human beings had. But remember, this was not so. They were humans. They were humans with all the normal feelings and emotions. They got upset and anxious. They were sad. They were angry. They missed their loved ones. They enjoyed being with them. They had likes and dislikes. Yusuf Salam had missed his family. Had missed his family. That is why he was longing to see his younger brother. And how eagerly took his brother. And then he secretly introduced himself to his real brother. And then he said, Ana Ahuka, I am your brother. And then what did he have to say? It is very important. It is a very important message for all of us. After like more than 30 years, a period of solitude, of hardships, of crises, of trials consecutively one after the other, and all this period of misery, because of whom? Because of the brothers throwing them in the well. All these prolonged years of misery, of being deprived, deprived of so much, all coming up to him because of what? Because of his brothers. 
anyone in his position after such a reunion would have just burst out, would have just burst out with all sorts of complaints, all sorts of complaints against the brothers, all sorts of bad words, words and cursing the, the brothers who had, who had planned, who had attempted to murder him, cribbing, complaining, backbiting. But here we see nothing of the sort. On the contrary, we, we see that he is consoling. He is consoling Hazrat Bani Amin, saying, Fala is, don't get disappointed, don't get upset. This is how a true Muslim needs to behave. This is the self-control. And moreover, this is how he needs to relate to his past. No hue, no cry, no regrets, no stresses about the past, moving on in life, forgetting about the harsh memories of the past. This is the positive mindedness of the believers we need to instill in ourselves. Verse number 70. So when he had furnished them with their supplies, he put a gold measuring bowl into the bag of his brother. Then an announcer called out, O oh, people of caravan, indeed you are the thieves. <coughs> so now let's see what happened is that when the, the furnishing was done and when the caravan and the brothers were about to leave, Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam, he ordered his servants to place his golden bowl in the luggage of his younger brother, Hazrat Bini Amin. And maybe this was just like a gift. It was like a gift, a departing since the brother was leaving. So it was like a gift from Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam to his younger brother. But at the same time, there was an announcer. He announced that they had lost another bowl. What happened next, verse 71, they said while approaching them, what is, what is it you are missing? That is the brothers asked the announcer that what had they lost? Verse number 72, they said, we are missing the mayor of the king. What was, my, uh, what was missing was Sava ul Malik, the mayor of the king. And for he who produces it is the reward of a camel's load, and I am responsible for it. So now what was lost by the people or by the servants of the king was, they announced was the Sava ul Malik, the mayoring bowl of the king. Uh, it must have been a bowl which was used to measure the grains to be given because that was obvious. <coughs> It was obvious that uh, some prescribed amount of rations was given per head. So this uh, bowl, which was used to measure the prescribed amount of ration per head, that was lost. And the announcer also at the same time announced that the person who would find this suwa of the king, he would be given an extra allowance. This was to make a temptation for them to find out the suwa. And uh, there was an extra allowance of a person as a reward. So what happened next? Verse number 73, they said, by Allah, you have certainly known that we did not come to cause corruption in the land and we have not been thieves. So this is Hazrat Yaqub had tried to save them from this allegation and this, uh, this punishment of, and this penalty, but this was supposed to happen, so it happened. They had tried to clarify that they were not thieves and they had not stolen the mayor of uh, the king, but they were taken as it. Now, what happened next, verse 74, the accuser said, then what would be its recompense if you should be liars? The brother said, its recompense is that he in whose bag it is found, he himself will be in its recompense. Thus, do we recompense the wrongdoers? So this was uh, mutually decided what punishment would be given to the thief in whose bag or whose luggage the sava would be found. Verse number 76, so he began the search with their bags before the bags of his brother. Then he extracted 
it from the bag, extracted it was, it was what? It was that golden bag, which was extracted from the bag of Hazrat Bini Amin, which Hazrat Yusuf salam, had gifted him, but the sawa was not extracted. He extracted it from the bag of his brother. Since that also belonged to the king and something else was also found, thus did we plan for Yusuf. And he could not have taken his brother within the religion of the king, except that Allah will we raise in degrees whom we will, but over every possessor of knowledge is one more knowing who the Allah al alim now, what happened was that when the search started, so when Bini Amin's luggage was searched, instead of the suwa, the golden bowl, which Hazrat Yusuf salam, had gifted him, it came out. And since that was also a king's position, so Hazrat Bini Amin was taken as a thief. Now, how did this all go about? According to some traditions and commentaries, uh, in some commentaries, they say, that it was actually Yusuf alayhi salam who had planned it all up himself. At first, he ordered the golden bowl to be kept, and then he ordered the announcer to announce and the people to search, to create a justification to um, keep Bini Amin back in Egypt. But, you know, to me somehow, this clever trick does not seem correct. It does not seem appropriate. I cannot imagine that a prophet would have played such a trick or created or fabricated the whole situation. It somehow did not seem up to the level of a prophet doing all, playing up all these tricks. It was actually what? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says, Qazalika Ali Yusuf. This is how we planned for Yusuf alayhi salam. So this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's planning was to reunite both the brothers by his grace. Yusuf alayhi salam only had gifted the golden bowl and put it in the luggage. But by the planning of Allah, coincidentally, by the planning of Allah, coincidentally, another bowl got misplaced concurrently at the same time. And when it was searched, then they got out the golden, uh, the golden bowl and thus the brother was labeled as the thief. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had thus created the condition for Yusuf salam, to keep his brother back. And Allah had created the condition of reunion of the brothers. So what happened is that what happens is, is not what Yusuf salam planned is happened was what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned. And uh, they, what uh, Yaqub salam had planned, even that did not happen. What happened was what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had pl planned. And he had just tried to save his children. But remember, no father, not even prophets, no one can save except the only savior who is our Rabb, our merciful sustainer. Verse number 77, they said, who the brothers, if he steals, who, Hazrat bin Yimin, he steals a brother of his, who Hazrat Yusuf salam has stolen before also, but Yusuf salam kept it within himself and did not reveal it to them. He said, you are worse in position and Allah is most knowing of what you describe. Now, what happened was that when the brothers of uh, Hazrat Yusuf salam, they found out that Bini Amin had stolen, they came up with a story of the past and they said that Hazrat Yusuf salam had stolen. So that is why his younger brother is also stealing, keeping up to the same routine and the same example. Now, what had Hazrat Yusuf salam stolen to which the brothers was referring to? This is, this was that when Hazrat Yusuf was a child, he visited his grandmother's house. And the neighbor to, her, to his grandmother was a worshiper of idols. And he being born and he being bred in a family of prophets, he obviously 
took dislike to the eagles. So he very secretly, he stole the neighbor woman's idols and he broke them. So referring to this, the brothers said that Yusuf salam, was a thief and that is why taking on to his example, Bin Yamin had also stolen. Now, what is this? Telling Yusuf salam, very much on his face where they were receiving so much of his kindness, receiving so much of his kindness and of his goodness, but still face to face telling him that he was a thief and he had stolen. What did Hazrat Yusuf salam, do? All what he needed was to tell his soldiers to cut their heads off and to behead all of them. But what did he do? He did what? He, he showed up and he came up with the, with the mannerism of whom? Yusuf alayhi salam, the muhsin, the doers of good and kindness. They said, oh Aziz, indeed he has a father who is an old man. So take one of us in place of him. Indeed we see you are a doer of good. He said, I seek the refuge of Allah to prevent that we take except him with whom we found our positions. Indeed, we would then be unjust. They were trying to convince him to keep any one of them, of other than brothers other than Bini Amin, so that they could fulfill the promise and to guard and protect and return Hazrat Bini Amin to Hazrat Yaqub salam. So you see, there is a mild change. They are getting mindful and sensitive about their pledges and about their oaths. And they are also sensitive about uh, not hurting their father also. And they are like slightly obedient and respectful to the father also. So this is a slow change, which is coming by what? By the successful parenting, the parenting of tolerance and of, uh, of, uh, of forbearance by Hazrat Yaqub salam. Verse number 80, so when they had despaired of him, that is when they tried to convince Hazrat Yusuf salam to take any one of them instead of Bin Yamin, but he said that this was not fair. According to the law, only the thief could be kept back. So when they had despaired of them, they secluded themselves in private consultation. That is, they started asking one another what to do. The eldest of them said, do you not know that your father has taken upon you an oath by Allah and that before you failed in your duty to Yusuf salam, so you can sense slowly and steadily there is a change which is coming in the temperaments, in the personalities and in the manners of the sons of Hazrat Yaqub salam. So I will never leave this land until my father permits me or Allah decides for me and he is the best of judges. Subhanallah. So there you are. The style and the manner of Hazrat Yusuf Islam, where he was slowly and steadily introducing them to the attributes of Allah has come up in the speech of those disobedient children also. Now they are also talking and mentioning and remembering about the attributes of Allah. This change in manner of the sons of Yaqub alayhi salam has started. They have started obeying their father. They have, uh, they obeyed the father and entered to the various gates. Now they are concerned about keeping up their promises and they are talking in a manner similar to the manner of their father. So remember, spoil the child and spare the rod. No, the proverb is not proven here. They said, return to your father and say, oh, father, indeed, your son has stolen. And we did not testify except to what we know, what we knew. And we were not the witnesses of unseen and ask the city in which we were and the caravan in which we came. Indeed, we are the truthful. They, although now they were truthful, but a person who who has been a liar in past, he loses his reliability. And then even if he is, he is talking the truth, he has to gather witnesses for making people believe him. Verse number 83, Yaqub alayhi salam said, rather your souls have enticed you to something. So patience is most fitting. Perhaps Allah will bring them to me all 
all together indeed he is who is knowing and who is wise subhanallah what patience now again another trial for hazrat yaqub alayhi salam he lost hazrat yusuf alayhi salam and now losing his youngest son again what does he say sabrun jamilun and he also said something else he said in allah allah inna yaqtini bihi jamia perhaps allah will bring them back together this shows what his reliance on allah his believes in the powers of allah and he has not lost hope remember a person when loses hope then it becomes difficult for him to stay patient he was patient why because he realized he relied on allah he was why he was patient because he had belief on the powers on the control or on the authority and the controls of allah and he had not lost hope and moreover he knew that allah is what al alim and al hakim and he turned away from them and said oh my sorrow over yusuf alayhi salam and his eyes become wide from grief and for he was of that a suppressor verse number 85 they said by allah you will not cease remembering yusuf alayhi salam until you become fatally ill or become of those who perish so you realize here still that mild flames of envy are still just kindling off and on verse number 86 he said i only complain of my suffering and my grief to allah and i know from allah that which you do not know beautiful words of hazrat yaqub alayhi salam saying what inama ashku bathi wa huzni ila allah a wonderful line of affection for all of us what is this in time of suffering in time of grief complain and request to none but allah the true and the only master who can help you know what happens is in a time of grief and sorrow and in time of crisis people go about raising hue and cry in front of others people go about complaining and grumbling about their hardships and difficulties to other people go about asking from help from others but all of this is to of no avail what we need to do in any suffering in any crisis in any calamity in any grief inna ma ashku bathi wa huzni ila allah return to allah supplicate to allah seek forgiveness from allah seek help support guidance and protection from allah was number 87 oh my sons go go and find about yusuf alayhi salam and his brother and despair not of relief from allah indeed no one despairs of relief from allah except the disbelieving person still has a ray of hope you see hope for alayhi salam they said oh aziz adversity has touched us and our family and we have come with goods poor in quality but give us full measures and be charitable to us indeed allah rewards the charitable subhanallah look look who is who is advising whom to do charity the brothers of yusuf the oppressors the evil wicked planners they advising hazrat yusuf alai salam to be charitable and telling him that allah will reward the charitable this was the last blow this was the last straw and yusuf alai salam finally broke he had to now disclose his entity but on the third encounter does he speak to them as yusuf alai salam this was his third encounter with his brothers he has he has been exhibiting total self control and controlling his anger and forgiving them throughout now on the third encounter does he speak to them as yusuf alayhi salam after controlling his emotions previous occasions once he opens up what does he have to say 
what does he have to say now that once he is opening up? He said, do you know what you did with Yusuf and his brother when you were ignorant? And they said, are you Yusuf? He said, yes, I am Yusuf. And this is my brother. Allah, Allah has certainly favored us. Indeed, he fears. He who fears Allah and is patient, then indeed Allah does not allow to be lost the reward of those who, who, who do good. Remember, had there been anyone else instead of Hazrat Yusuf salam, would have been overpowered, would have exploded like a volcano, would have been outraged, flown in anger, would have come out like, oh, you brutals, you murderers, you envious people, you hard-hearted murderers, you threw me, you threw me in the well, you spoiled whole of my life, and so on and so forth. But the pious, the God-fearing, the muhsin, he comes out saying, questioning them, making them think, making them think, you know what, what you did? Rather than saying things himself, just making them think of the events themselves and regret and feel ashamed themselves. Rather than calling names, rather than being ill-mannered, he, he behaves as if seems to justify their bad manners, relating it to ignorant. He seems to justify their bad manners and relates it to ignorance. Why? So that they would realize how harmful, how harmful their ignorance has been to them. So they may try to remove and get rid of their ignorance. What a remarkable control of emotions. What a perfect check and control of language. What appropriately chosen balanced words. How forgiving, how kind, and yet sincere. Subhanallah. Subhanallah, this is a Muslim. And this is a Mohsin. And this is a role model for all of us. In the verse 20, Allah also mentions the importance of fear of Allah, piety and patience. He is humble to say, Hazrat Yusuf was humble to say that all what he had achieved was not because of his own or because of his own wisdom, his own efforts, his own working. He had achieved was what? Because of a favor and blessing of Allah. And then, like father, like son, like Hazrat Yaqub, Hazrat Yusuf, very much like his father, in his normal routine, introducing to the attributes of Allah. So this is, this is what the manner of a Muslim is like. Verse number 91, they said, by Allah, certainly Allah has preferred you over us, and indeed we have been sinners. Now the brothers are changing, changing. The transformation has accelerated. And this transformation was brought about by what? By the successful, successful tolerant parenting by Hazrat Yus Yaqub alayhi salam. And now finally, now finally, the final role was played by the goodness and kindness of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. They have started confessing. They accept their regret and now they are apologetic. And they also realize the attributes of Allah. Allah says that if you work to take away bad manners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered, idfa billati hiya ahsan. You removed all the bad things with what? With goodness. And Allah promises that if you work to take away bad manners, if you work to take away bad manners of your enemies and of those who are against you, with your goodness, you will see that very soon your bitter enemies will become your sincere friends. And that is exactly what happened in the case of Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam, Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salam, and in the life of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they were what? 
they were they were patient they were kind they were forgiving they were goodness in their they had goodness in their manners and then their their heartiest enemies they turned to be their sincere friends he said no blame will there be upon you today allah will forgive you and he is the most merciful of the merciful the words of hazrat yusuf alayhi salam la tasriba alaykum al yawm the golden words of mohsin yusuf alayhi salam these were the words words which were announced by prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam on the day of the conquest of makkah the benefactor of humanity announcing total forgiveness for all the people of makkah yusuf alayhi salam forgave all the brothers and also prayed prayed for their forgiveness and then he continues he continues in the matter in the manner which was trained to him by hazrat yaqub alayhi salam that he is introducing to the attributes of allah and here when he is forgiving them himself what does he introduce to he does not mention the attribute of al alim and al hakim here very wisely here when they are when they are feeling regretful and when they are confessing then very wisely does yusuf alayhi salam introduce the different attributes of allah here according to the conversation he introduces that allah is merciful and forgiving so that realizing this attribute of allah the brothers they start seeking and they return towards the merciful and forgiving allah seeking forgiveness verse number 93 take this my shirt and cast it over the face of my father he will become seeing and bring me your family all together now after announcing forgiveness for all forgiving all and announcing forgiveness for all what did hazrat yusuf alayhi salam do he did not prolong in indulging about the discussion of the past what happened has passed why spend time and waste time talking about the past about something which cannot be undone which cannot be changed so let's let's just move along in life rather than clinging on to the past this is the positive outlook needed for and by a believer no point no point wasting time and effort discussing and continuing discussions about the past so go go take my shirt and put it on the eyes or the face of my father his sight will return because we know that because of continuously crying of sorrow for the separation of hazrat yusuf alayhi salam his beloved his beloved son has yaqub alayhi salam had lost his sight verse 94 and when the caravan departed from egypt their father said indeed i find the smell of yusuf i find the smell of yusuf father is no doubt a father he finds the smell of yusuf and then he added he would say and i would say that he was alive if you did not think me weak and in mind and they said by allah indeed you are in your same old error father gets the smell of hazrat yusuf alayhi salam despite the fact that crying in sorrow he had lost his sight but he had not lost his hope this is reliance and this is knowing and believing in the powers and authorities of allah allah bless us all and when the bearer of good tidings arrived he cast over his face and he returned once again seeing he said did i not tell you that i know from allah that which you do not know verse number 97 they said oh father ask for our forgiveness of our sins indeed we have been sinners so the brothers finally have transformed they are apologetic to their father they are apologetic to their brother they are confessing their sins they are seeking forgiveness from allah and they are requesting their father and brother to ask for their forgiveness you see 
It was not like spare the rod and spoil the child. The cool, the patient, the tolerant, the forgiving behavior and handling of Hazrat Yaqub al-Islam with the sons finally succeeded, but slowly and steadily. It did take a lifetime, but it did work. Allah help us, Allah support us, Allah guide us, Allah protect us. He said, I will ask for forgiveness for you from my Lord. Indeed, he, it is he who is forgiving and merciful. Now, both the son and the father, Yusuf al-Islam and Yaqub al-Islam, are introducing to the, 11, to the 10 brothers the attribute of Allah, since they want them to return and seek forgiveness from Allah. Verse number 99. And when they entered upon Yusuf salam, who the whole family is now migrating from Palestine to Egypt. What did Hazrat Yusuf salam have to do? He took his parents to himself and said, enter Egypt, Allah willing, inshallah, we will be safe and secure. And he raised his parents upon the throne and they bowed to him in frustration. And he said, oh, my father, this is the explanation of my vision of before. My Lord has made it a reality. And he was certainly good to me when he took me out of prison and brought you here from the Bedouin life after Shaitan had induced estrangement between me and my brothers. Indeed, my Lord, is subtle in what he wills. Indeed, it is he, it is he who is the knowing and wise. So now, Yusuf salam, the king of Egypt, he receives his family, he receives his parents. What message is this? The message of importance of maintaining the relations of bonds, the relations of kin, how important they were. He did not breach them. He did not break them. He joined all of them together in Egypt. And then when he received his parents, he made them sit on his throne beside him. And all the people bowed down with respect. Now this ending was what? This ending was what had been shown in his dream. And we, we had mentioned and we went through it in the first stanza and Hazrat Yaqub salam had given him the interpretation was correct. Now, stopping here to analyze the behavior of Hazrat Yusuf salam as a son. Hazrat Yusuf salam had shifted to a foreign land and there he had acquired power and authority and position and rule. He was the king of Egypt, but he did not leave his parents alone. He did not leave his parents alone behind, struggling with their old age all by himself, all by themselves. But instead, he brought them, he brought his parents and he brought his family. He brought them with him. He shared his success with them and he gave them all the love, all the care, respect and regard that Allah had blessed him with. Today, if we see and if we compare sons, children shifting, shifting out of the country to places, raising high in life, and then they tend to forget. And then they tend to forget and leave and abandon their parents. Or son, sons rising high in life, they tend to get arrogant and start looking down on their old parents, calling them ignorant, calling them obsolete, calling them outdated. Remember what we are. Remember what we are, where we've reached, what we have achieved is no doubt by the grace of Allah, by the, but actually the struggle, the efforts, the work of our parents also our achievements and our performances will be reflected where our children will reach. And then Hazrat Yusuf said what? That my, my Lord was very kind to me. Yusuf is talking to his family about his achievements, about what all he has received, what he has acquired. But he is not arrogant. He is not boastful. He is not 
showing off about his wisdom, about his tactful planning, or he is not flaunting about how, how clueful, how sharp, how wise he had been to achieve all that. Instead, he is humble. He is humble and he's acknowledging and mentioning that this is all what this is, all the blessings of Allah, the mercies of Allah. This is gratitude. This is gratitude and remembrance and patience and humbleness, which has been shown by Yusuf as a Mohsin. He continues with his introduction of Allah that he is what? Al Alim and Al Hakim. Because belief in these two attributes was the main asset of his life. My Lord, you have given me something of sovereignty and taught me of the interpretation of dreams, creator of heavens and earth. The words of the supplication are beautiful. Creator of the heavens and earth. You are my protector in this world and in the hereafter. Cause me to die as a Muslim and join me with the righteous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us how Hazrat Yusuf salam, is acknowledging the blessings of Allah and yet supplicating for more here and hereafter. Beautiful supplication taught to us in Quran by Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. That is from the news of the unseen, which we reveal, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, to you. And you were not with them when they put together their plan while they conspired. Who? The brothers of Yusuf, who conspired against Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam. And most of the people, although you strive for it, are not believers. So now there is coming for the believers, non-believers of Quraysh, a warning. And you do not ask of them for it any payment. It is not except a reminder to the world. And how many a sign within the heavens and the earth do they pass over while they therefrom are turning away? And most of them believe not in Allah except while they associated others with him. And they, and then do they feel secure that there will not come to them an overwhelming aspect of the punishment of Allah or that the hour will not come upon them suddenly while they do not perceive. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually warning the people of Quraysh would come up with the question. The question was answered and now they are being warned that look, the brothers of Yusuf salam, was so nasty and so evil and how they were punished. So if you carry on with your nasty plans and your evil tricks against Prophet wasallam, you will be punished similarly. And Prophet wasallam, will be helped similarly the way Hazrat Yusuf salam, was helped by Allah. Say, this is my way. I invite to Allah with insight, I and those who follow me, and exalted is Allah, and I am not of those who associate others with him. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. And we sent not before you as messengers except men to whom we reveal from among the people of cities. So have they not traveled through the earth and observed how was the end of those before them? And the home of hereafter is best for those who fear Allah. Then will you not reason? Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-khuda wal-tuqa wal-afafa wal-ghina. And they continued until when the messengers despaired and were certain that they had been denied. There came to them our victory and whoever we willed was saved. 
and our punishment cannot be repelled from the people who are criminals. So continuously, the people of Quraysh are being warned and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions who were being persecuted and oppressed, they are being consoled and promised the help and victory of Allah. Verse number 111, there was certainly in their stories a lesson for those of understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those of understanding. Never was the Quran a narration invented, but a confirmation of what was before it and a detailed explanation of all the things and guidance and mercy for people who believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, help us learn and the remember from the stories of Quran. Help us, help us take a lesson from the source of reformation for us to be obedient for our manners and for our ethics. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us connect with the book, help us connect with receiving the teachings of the Quran. Make it, make it a guidance, make it a guidance for all of us, for our fathers and for, for our descendants. Make it a source of your mercy on all of us, our deceased and our progenies. Help us be kind, help us be forgiving, help us stay tolerant and patient, help us develop reliance and humbleness, help us take out any forms of arrogance from ourselves, help us control our temple, help us check and control our language and our manners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgive our follies, forgive our forgetfulnesses, and forgive all our sins. May they be major, may they be minor, may they be known, may they be unknown, may they be hidden, or may they be shown. Forgive us all, forgive our young, forgive our old, forgive all those live, forgive all those who have deceived. Forgive our major sins, forgive our minor sins, forgive our concealed sins, forgive our revealed sins, and bless us all here and hereafter. Allahumma hasibna hisab in yasira. Allahumma hasibna hisab in yasira. Allahumma hasibna hisab in yasira. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Rabbana srifa anna azaba jahannum. Inna azabaha kana gharama. Inna ha saad mustakarun wa maqama. Rabbibni li indaka baitan fil janna. Rabbibni li indaka baitan fil janna. Rabbibni li indaka baitan fil janna. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannatul firdaus. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sabiyul alim. Wa tub alayna innaka anta tawabur rahim. Rabbana la tuzih qulubana bada iz hadaytana wa hablana milatunka rahma innaka anta al-wahhab. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati ya ما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين سمامين